Hello, my name is Mark Klimek, and I am a registered nurse, and I will be doing a session with you folks on the Glasgow Coma Scale. This is episode seven in our series. So if you haven't seen the first six, you can see them on Thinkific, Thinkific uh, at the Clinic Connect site. So my name is Mark, as I said, I'm a registered nurse. Uh, I am the president and CEO of Clinic Connect, which is a clinic reviews session uh, company. We review for NCLEX and we help nurses prepare for their profession. We launched Clinic Connect as sort of a, a site for you guys to get a lot of information about nursing in general and the NCLEX specifically. What we're doing in these sessions is we're doing what we call a walk through the blue book. Now the blue book is a book that I wrote that has the factual content that is essential to know for the NCLEX RN and PN tests, this book here. Now, we, this book has like 200 different topics and we're only hitting a couple a week, but we're walking through them. We're giving you a little bit of a taste of it and hitting essential points. There's a lot more in the blue book than what we're going to be covering. Uh, if you don't have a blue book, you can get one online at uh, Amazon. If you come to our live review, you get one. If you come to, uh, if you get our uh, on demand program uh, on the clinic website, uh, you also get one. Uh, but if you don't have one, you will still learn some things, but we will refer to the book as we go through. So walk through the blue book today. Uh, this topic of the Glasgow Coma Scale is under the neurological examination topic on chapter three or four. It's on a prom health promotion and it's on page 53 of the edition that uh, is most current. So let me talk a little about the Glasgow Coma Scale. Do nurses need to know the Glasgow Coma Scale? Absolutely you do. So let me give you a little history of the Glasgow Coma Scale. It was developed in 1974 at the University of Glasgow in Scotland, hence the name Glasgow Coma Scale. Now here's the reason, why did they develop this scale? Well, I've been a nurse for a long time, 40 some years, and I started out in neurological nursing. And back in those days before the Glasgow Coma Scale, we would report a person's level of consciousness using terms like obtunded, lethargic, semi-comatose, sleepy, slow to arouse. Well, those are very subjective words and they don't allow you to compare patients over time accurately. Because if I said someone is sleepy, do you know what that means? Might not you have a different definition of sleepy than me or lethargic? What does it take to be lethargic? You know what I mean? Does the guy have to like wait 10 seconds before they respond to be lethargic or is it they just don't answer right away or their answer is very slow in wording? It's because no one really knows exactly what those words mean. So it was really bad back then before the Glasgow Coma Scale because we had no way of comparing patients' conditions over time neurologically because we just had those vague subjective words. Now the Glasgow Coma Scale tries to add objectivity to neurological assessment so that you can compare patient to patient time versus time in the same patient. So let's talk about the procedure of the Glasgow Coma Scale. It measures three things, actually four, but we'll add the fourth. But the basic Glasgow Coma Scale measures best eye response, best verbal response, and best motor response. So I, verbal, and motor. Those are what we assess. So you get three scores, one for the eye, which is a total of four, one for the e, mo, e, um, motor, I'm sorry, verbal response, which is a total of five, and a score for the best motor response, which is six. So let me go over that again. I, the best you can get is a four, Verbal, the best you can get is a five. And motor, the best you can get is a six on those subscales. 
So if you add four plus five, that's nine, add six, that's 15. So the possible top score on a Glasgow Coma Scale is a 15. And that person is totally, fully alert, oriented, and extremely healthy neurologically. Now, the higher the score, obviously, the better off the person is, and the lower score, the worse off they are. So you can say, hey, he went from an eight to a seven. He went from a 10 to an 11. And see, that tells us something. And then we can look at the subscores and see where it changed. Was it motor? Was it eye? Was it verbal? And do you see how much better that is than lethargic, you know? So it's a great score. Now, for NCLEX and for your practice, you do not need to memorize the four subscales and the points for the eye, the five subscales and the points for the verbal, and the six subpoints and scores for the motor. That will be given to you. You just need to know what the scores mean and what or how they're determined. So how do you get the scores? How do you actually interact with the patient to elicit a score? Well, for eye, you look at see how they eye open. It's not pupils, it's eye opening. Do they open their eyes? So if you just say their name and they open their eyes, that's a top score. If you apply painful stimulus to them and they don't even flex their eyelids even a bit, that's a low score. That's a one, okay? So, but it's the best. And the same thing with verbal. If they respond to you immediately, that's the top score. If they don't respond at all, that's a low score. That's a one. Same thing with motor. If they're freely moving about without any stimulation like I am here, that's a high score. If they don't move at all, ever, even to pain, that's a low score. Now, the key is this. This is probably the most important thing to carry away from this talk. These scores you give them are their best response, their best one. That means if you press their fingernail twice, three times, three times, let's say, and one of those times you get a little bit of a, a, a blink in the eye, you give them that score, the best one, the blink in the eye. Don't say, well, the most of the time they didn't open their eyes, so I'm giving them the lower score. No, no. <laughs> if, they, if they even slightly spontaneously move a finger like this, that gets a full score. They don't have to be going like that to get a full score, okay? So best eye response, best verbal, best motor, all right? Now, as I said before, you get a total of 15 points for a fully oriented and alert patient. If it's under eight, eight or under, they are severely uh, brain injured or impaired. Okay, so you, you don't want it to be under eight. It's considered to be comatose, eight and lower. Maybe say like 12 to nine, that would be moderate brain injury. You know, and then like a 13 and a 14, that'd be minimal brain injury. So it kind of changes when it hits a dozen points, 12, that's moderate. And then down to eight where it becomes severe. Okay, now, one of the things that the Glasgow Coma Scale did not take into account was pupil reactivity, your pupils, and aren't those real important in neuro? So around 2011, some guys in Scotland came up with a, a way to incorporate pupils, but then it was improved again in 2018, just five, six years ago. So what is that? Now what we have is the GSC, Glasgow Coma Scale, minus PRS, pupillary response, okay, score, pupillary response score, PRS. So it's GSC minus PRS. So now you have to know the pupillary response score. Got it? Okay, now you know how to test pupils. Shine a light in, look to see if one reacts or they both react, right, brisk, all that. Okay, now you can give a zero, a one, or a two on a pupillary response score. Zero means both eyes respond appropriately. They, they constrict with light, okay? A one means one pupil does and the other pupil doesn't. You give them a one. If neither pupil, if, if neither one opens, you give them a two. So a PRS is different 
than a GSCS. Glasgow Coma, the higher score, the better. Pupillary response score, the higher score, the worse. Okay, <laughs> that kind of confusing. Okay, but what you're doing is it's GCS minus the PRS. So if you get a 12 GCS and neither pupil responds, neither one does, you give them a two. So it's a 12 minus two, which gives them a 10. Do you got that? So what would it be if you got an eight and one pupil reacted and the other didn't? What score would that be? Well, eight minus one is seven. So remember, it's always minus the PRS. You're gonna see GCS minus PRS. That minus is not dash. It means subtract, minus. Okay, zero, one, two. So your score should be 15 because 15, both pupils react, that's a zero. So you subtract nothing. So you get a 15, got that? So I hope that helps because that's very, very important to know. <clears throat> Don't forget, uh, if you have friends that would benefit from things like this, tell them to go to Thinkific, set up an account and join Clinic Connect. And weekly you can get these sessions that I do. And this is episode seven. So there've been six previous ones. Thank you for this opportunity and, and I wish the best for you.